Hello everyone, this is the second episode in this build series where I design and build my first Eurorack module, a voltage controlled LFO. So far I have completed the schematics and also designed and ordered the PCBs. After I looked closer at the PCBs I received, I noticed that I forgot to click the specify location option when I ordered them. But this is not a big issue really. I will stumble into worse problems as you will see later in this video. I use surface mount components wherever I find it beneficial and through hole components for a rest. My design philosophy is to try to avoid loose wires and try to put everything on a single PCB. Everything is designed for hand soldering using standard tools. Speaking of tools, a digital microscope is really useful for SMT work and you can buy them from around 25 euros. Uh, you will also need a pair of fine pointed tweezers a solder pen with a fine tip and a flux pen is also highly recommended. Ok, back to the LFO again. I made a couple of errors in the design. First of all I somehow managed to swap the reference designation of a resistor and a capacitor in the silk print and it took a while to figure that out. But after fixing that I got the oscillator running. The next issue was some glitches in the ramp wave shaper that I solved by adding a capacitor in the feedback path of one of the op-amps. And I also discovered a couple of fit issues that I need to fix in the next board spin. The trim put on the board is for the sine wave shaper and it adjusts the level fed into the diode network. I thought that I needed to match the diodes so I selected through hole types for those but it turned out that I didn't need to do that. I mean, I'm not trying to build a precision signal generator with uh, best-in-class distortion figures here. It's just a module that will be used for generating modulation. The testing was done with an oscilloscope, and after adjusting a couple of component values, I faced the final remaining issue, the sync input. The input is level triggered, but it should of course be edge triggered. Right now it will keep the oscillator core in a reset state as long as the input is above 5 volts. I think that the LFO will be more useful if the oscillator is reset by a negative to positive transition, because then I can connect a square wave from a clock divider to the sync input. Next step was to make the front panel. I had this idea to design it in Fusion 360, 3D print it and paint it with some homemade stencils. It uh, turned out that this was quite a time consuming task. As you can see here there are a lot of steps involved with designing a stencil, cut it with a cutting machine, paint the front panel and apply the stencil. Uh, paint some more and finally seal everything with a clear varnish. It basically took me a whole day to complete three front panels and one was scrapped so I could only use two in the end. My second hobby is uh, scale modeling so for me this is business as usual. But I don't expect anyone else to do anything like this. It's uh, simply too time consuming I think. But if there are any interest in this process, please let me know in the comments and I will make a more detailed tutorial about it. With this I would like to round up the video with some final thoughts about this project. I did a couple of mistakes, but I think that is only to be expected when designing the first module. Apart from the sync input issue, I'm very happy with the design and how it turned out. However, I made a big mistake when I did the floor plan of the PCB. I was so concerned about the routing of the analog circuits that I totally ignored the ergonomics. Because the pots and the jacks they are placed too close to each other and uh, there is a big space in the middle of the panel that is actually not used at all. Because of this I will redesign the LFO and I will fix the following things. First. Make the sync input edge sensitive. And I will also make a new PCB design where I make it more ergonomic. And finally, I will make a separate PCB panel. I will make these changes to the design before I upload it to my GitHub. So stay tuned for a third episode in this series in the near future. With that, I want to thank you for watching 
and I'll see you in the next video.